Can you be instructed? Can anyone give you advice when your emotions are dominating and raging? That's a mark of maturity. When preaching to preach new sermons, becoming a man, maturity. That's a mark of maturity. When you're able to listen, when your emotions are climbing the wall, your passions are released, your desires are locked in, stress, stress, worry many times is associated with stress. Anxiety. One of these quotes I read, it's stress is the gap between the demands placed on us and the strength we have in meeting those demands. One side of your life is responsibility. One side, you have places to go, you have to work, you have a family perhaps, you have bills to pay, you have a God to serve, you have ministry, things you want to do, things you'd like to do. You're trying to accomplish something, maybe it's school or education. And there's people involved in this, and there's pressures and obligations. And the other side of your life uh, is how can I get it all done? How can I cope with this pressure, these demands? Not enough time, not enough energy, not enough ability, and so the difference, stress is that chasm between all I need to do yet I can't seem to do. And the Bible has words that mean the same. Stress creates frustration. In itself, it's not necessarily a sin, although all sin will cause you stress. Sin will drive you. Weighted down with cares in this world. Burning yourself out on things. You've heard me say this. It means nothing to God and nothing to eternity. In our text is an incredible instruction to this generation. I speak to people, their greatest fear is to be alone, to be quiet, to be still. Their worst nightmare is to be alone with their own mind and their own thoughts. In our text, have you not known? Have you forgotten who God is? See, the problem when your emotions are jerking you and pulling you and frustration and all of these things begin to boil, if you're not careful, God gets lost in the midst of that. Do you not know that the Lord is the creator of the ends of the earth? How's that for perspective? That'll bring your life into focus. This is not the biggest I mean, God, He controls the ends of the earth. Surely He can control my little world if I'll just let Him. This is where faith is built. This is where faith shines brightest is in these moments and chapters many times where everything seems to be going off the rail and you say, no, I believe God. That's what Paul said. In the midst of a storm, they're throwing everything overboard. 
All of the, well, everything. The ship's going to sink. He said, no, I had a conversation with God down below decks, and God promised me, oh, we might lose the wealth, but every life will be spared. And then he says these powerful words, and I believe God. I mean, the ship was raging. I've been aboard ship in the ocean in storms. I mean, you can't imagine how small that ship feels. I believe God. Is that you? That's intelligence. I'm not believing my emotions. I'm not believing what I'm feeling. I'm believing my knowledge of God. Come on, come on, come on. And that brings stability. Yes, come on, Pastor. It's spiritual. We're not talking about trying to escape life or the absence of of troublers. We're not talking about running away into drugs or some kind of escape. Uh, he said, even the youth shall feign and be weary. The young men shall, in other words, with all of their physical strength, they still have problems. And I have a supernatural answer that brings a perspective you can't trust in your own strength in these kind of chapters and situations in life. But those who wait on the Lord, they refuse to eat the marshmallow. Those who wait on the Lord, there's a spiritual dimension that's transferred from God to you. This word wait is an interesting Hebrew word it's, it's almost like, it's like a marriage. The two shall become one. In the Hebrew, it's like God now infuses Himself with you. I had my knee replaced and they put this mechanical piece in my knee. And it's like my flesh they jammed it into the bone at the top and the bottom and, and it's infused in there. And it's like it's a part of me now. I don't even think about it. And except when I go through security at the airport. <laughs> I light up like a Christmas tree. I got one tell them. That's one they don't talk about. Yeah. They say, oh, you got to go over there. Those who wait on God. This is a powerful word. I ministered a bit on this the other night. It's not just hanging out, but it has the thought of laying hold of God. And this begins to be your portion of confidence. It's God wrapping Himself not just around you, but through you. It's an invasion of God's presence, His wisdom into your soul. It's the upper room. We've been preaching on Pentecost. I'm going to do something probably that the book of Acts is the record of God's power demonstrated in humanity. The upper room experience with God, they carried. They waited on God. And what happened? I mean, they were in horrendous times. They were killing Christians. It was the persecution was so horrible they had to run for their lives. And yet they multiplied. And miracles flowed in every chapter. Probably one of the great pictures of this, and I'm closing, is a man named Jacob. His name means he's a schemer. He's a con man. He's a ripoff. He's always living for the now moment, most of the time. And he's returning to his inheritance. And the Lord meets him that night. The Bible said he wrestles with the Lord. The day is breaking, and here is what I will not release you until you bless me.
That's a picture of this waiting. I'll not release you till something has been transferred from you to me. And God changed his name from Jacob to Israel, Prince with God. Are you waiting on God in the crisis, painful, disturbing, struggling chapters? Your life seems to be rolling out of control and your emotions are screaming later for tomorrow. Eat the marshmallow. It's Isaiah. In the house of God, the king has died. The whole nation's in turmoil. And he's in the house of God. I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. And the doorpost shook and God spoke. And I responded. When emotions are screaming and the nation, listen, I'm, I'm telling you, and, and I, I just stop and pause for a moment. <coughs> Sometimes I, I can't imagine what's happened to the United States of America. I, I can't, I mean, and, and a lot of church people, their views about abortion, uh, to be honest, listen, I, I, I don't see how you can vote for a politician who time and again wants to murder babies. I'm just not telling you how to vote. How can you vote for someone who actively promotes homosexuality and perversion? When God says, listen, you want to you bring a curse on yourself, read Psalm 1, read Romans 1. Listen, 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 listen to this old preacher. There's a place coming. And I'm afraid we're trembling on that. Well, God says, that's it. That's it. This is what you want? Have that. You want quail? I'll give you quail. Somewhere. Somewhere. We have to lay hold of God. And when we do, there's a harnessing of these low emotions. These ingredients of God's presence become ours. People have asked me over the years, different places around the world, Pastor Campbell, how have you survived all of these years? How have you, and Pastor Mitchell as well, I've heard people ask you, how have you survived all the pain and betrayals? Pouring your life into people, and, and everyone here that has any ministry, you've done the same. How do you survive the temptations when hell targets you? And, you know, a lot of, there's been a lot of it, but I've just tried to stay close to God. My son-in-law, Josh, one time mentioned, he said, I don't know how Pastor Campbell's made it. He said, I'm going to be singing courses all the time. Probably got tired. He's probably hinting to me. I'm tired of hearing you singing off key all the time. And, 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 and I'm just trying to give you some tips in life. Uh, Listen, somewhere you got God has to help you, or you're going to go down. I mean, if you can't stand up and witness, how are you going to stand? It? I'm, I'm reading now this this vaccine, and I'm hearing this vaccine they're preparing for the COVID has a chip in it, so they can track who has taken the vaccine and who not. Yeah, give me. I wonder how many who name the name of Jesus would take the mark. 
in a minute if it was disguised. He said, listen, you lay hold of God, you wait on me. I will renew your strength. You'll mount up with wings as eagles. You'll run and not be weary. You'll walk and not faint. Every arena of life, every spiritual climate of life, wherever you find yourself, he said, if you wait on me, I have the strength to deposit in you that you will mount over that. You will run through that. You will not quit. It doesn't matter. Hell, what you throw at me. The temptations, the trials, the agonies, the betrayals, the slanders, the history, the disappointment. If I wait on God, if I wait on God, if I wait on God. Do you wait on God? See, that's more than just a prayer. Do you wait on God? God, I'll not release you until you bless me, touch me. God, I'm not leaving this upper room until I'm endued with power from on high. God, I'm not walking away from this prayer or this time with you until I feel to do it. When that happens, listen. I've been preaching about submission. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. When you're submitted to God, I don't care. I had an addiction. I was crazy with addiction. I lived for alcohol, drugs, partying, and insanity. I lived for it, just like some of you. And God set me free. Thank you, Jesus. Because I wanted to be close to Him. Wasn't me. Wasn't me gritting my teeth and taking 127 steps, as AJ talks about. Programs. It's God. God. What kind of intelligence do you have when it comes to your emotions, and your desires, and your feelings? I ask you to bow your head with me this evening. Thank you for listening. Oh, Ramashanda la la barebo shikaya. God. God. You're in this place tonight or you're watching. Intelligence says repentance is my friend. I'm hurting. I've made bad decisions. I'm reaping those decisions. I'm broken. I'm bound. But all oh, this there's a Jesus who loves you right where you are. And not only does He love you, He can not only forgive you, He gives you a new purpose, a new life. I mentioned that this morning. That, that overwhelmed me. And that's not just me, that's you. He gives you a whole new life. Not just here, but in eternity. Not just talking about planet Earth. We're talking about heaven or hell. A prayer, a simple prayer, an honest prayer, where you recognize you can't save yourself. You can't fix your own heart. Oh Lord, I need you. But you can pray and the Spirit of God and the love of Christ 
Now gets involved. And old things begin to pass away. Everything now becomes new. Everything becomes new. Oh, God. Make it real. You're here tonight and that's you. You need to repent. You need to ask God to forgive you. And let Him change you. Begin to walk with Him and run with Him and fly with Him. And wait on Him. Seek Him while He may be found. Seek Him first, the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added. That's you this evening. Your heart cries out to a risen Savior. Say, I need to pray, Pastor. I need someone to pray for me. Would you allow me to pray for you this evening? You're not saved. You're not right with God. You lift your hand right now. That's me, Pastor. That's me. I want to get right with God. Here's my hand. I lift it up. I lift it up. I lift it up. Front to back, side to side. Backslider. He wants a new God. But you're out there in the land of insanity. You want to come home. You lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. Anyone at all. Anyone at all. Anyone at all. Anyone at all. Now I want to change the order of the service. I'm going to ask you to stand with me all over this building. I want to open these altars. You'd stand to your feet with me. I want to open these altars. You want to come and pray. Come out of your seat and begin to pray. You want to pray about having God's wisdom when your emotions are betraying you. Having God's mind when your emotions are trapping you, lying to you, deceiving you. Oh, God, you came over, Mama, my shall die. You're at your seat, you may be seated. Oh, God, you came over, Mama, my shall I die. Oh, Lord, you came over, Mama, my shall I die. God, give me understanding and wisdom, I pray. Oh, Ramasham, I got not just reacting. Oh, Jesus, 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 Lord. Oh, God, in Kebo Rebo Shire. Oh, Ramamamamashebo Rebo Rebo.
a skeleton. Bone, flesh. And the Bible says God breathed in him and he became a living soul. When God breathes in you, you live. When God breathes in you, His nature is imparted and His nature is life. And life more abundantly. When God finds you acceptable to His breath and His presence. Something, there's joy. There's peace. There's life. And life more abundantly. There's purpose. There's satisfaction. Joy unspeakable and full glory. There's divine strength. There's revelation. I was in the prayer room tonight and God whispered to me, words are the tools of influence. I don't know where that came from. But it's true. And it's like God whispered to me, if you don't use the tools, they become useless. Are you using your words to influence people for God? That's the tool that God's given you for influence, persuasion. Oh, God, breathe in me. Breathe in me. Breathe in me. Breathe in us. Breathe in this congregation. Breathe in our Bible conference in a few weeks. Breathe in this city, this nation. God, breathe. Breathe. Let your breath be known and felt. Oh, Would you stand with me? Let's sing it to God. Sing it as a prayer. Here I am waiting
praise your name, O Lord, I love your name. Oh, Rama Shivale Bore Moshaya. God, 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 God. Asking you to really, really pray for our conference. We know international people coming in. We'll be there. It'll be live stream. A lot of delegates coming in from the states. We pray that God will show up. I'm going to be in this auditorium here. Other uh, English Center, they only allow 40%. We can do that here. But if God shows up, everything will work. Everything will flow. Again, we'll watch your text, uh, email. We'll try to, as uh, soon as we have information, uh, Pastor Martinez going down to the funeral home tomorrow. I'm uh, trying to set, we're hoping, to have the funeral uh, 11 a.m. Saturday. Whether that's possible, we don't know. The viewing, of course, will start earlier. But uh, just be aware, uh, we'll get all of that to you. Yeah, just as quickly as possible. Thank God for you to see. Don't ask Marco if he goes in for